So I've started with a pencil line to create the horizon line, the split between the land formation and the sky that will be above. And I want to first create a little pocket of uh, land above that line. Now the land should be short because I want to be able to fit trees above it. It doesn't have to stretch all the way across. And I would use a variety of colors. I'm just trying to get a start of the land shape in here with a little bit of green. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre. Add a bit of that in there. I just don't want it to be a boring land shape that doesn't have a lot of contour to it. I'm going to add a little bit of green over in the end here. So it hits that wet area and kind of blends. And then along the shoreline, I do want to put a little bit of burnt, burnt umber because I know that shoreline would get darker along the edge of the water. I'm going to have a little bit of a muddy residue there, so I'm going to get that in there. And then my next step will be to let this dry. So above my land formation, I need to use my cut sponge to create some tree formations. And um, you should have gotten a small piece of sponge. Um, and I cut these specifically from a larger sponge with an edge. And you can use different edges. I wouldn't recommend using the ones that have the actual flat edge of the sponge on it because that's, that's not natural looking. But any of the cut edges um, to create uh, foliage works really well. So in order to use this, you first need to get it wet and squeeze it out completely. And then, depending on the color of the tree that you want, you need to soak up um, paint into the sponge and then begin to apply it in a way that's going to create some foliage. Now, you don't want it to look all the same, so you want to kind of turn your sponge and create different shapes. I always like to leave a little space in, in between parts of the tree, too, so I can let the trunk show through. Um, and I'm going to keep squeezing my sponge out. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to use a variety of tree colors. You can certainly pretend it's fall even if it's not and create, you know, some orange and some yellow trees. Um, right now I've got a green and this is a brown burnt sienna tree. So I'm going to try to create. And you don't want all your trees to be the same shape or size either. You can make some shorter and some taller. Um, certainly you can mix some colors if you'd like. There's a yellow ochre tree is going to be next. And you can create, um, you know, bigger blobs. So maybe you can create, like, maybe this would be a smaller tree next to this one. So that might be two trees there. Anyway, I would plan on, I would say, four to five blobs of color there. I'll do another green one. And you can let them run together if you'd like. And leave a little more space. So that looks pretty good. Um, and I was dabbing my sponge directly into the paint lightly, um, just touching that edge of the sponge into the paint uh, well. Uh, I didn't mix it onto the palette. This is pretty um, heavy color. So uh, just know that you don't want to have it so transparent. You want to make sure it's a good, strong color. So that is step two, and then I will let that dry. So I'm going to start to finish uh, this one up. We've got multiple steps that have to happen in this next part of uh, this tutorial. So um, this water is going to be at the bottom. It's going to create a graded wash. So it's going to go from darker at the lower portion and get lighter as it gets toward the shoreline. And then we'll create some water reflections of this tree line into the water that's below. So I'm going to use my large one inch uh, wide flat brush. I'm going to need my half inch flat brush for the reflections. And between those two, I should be able to get this portion done. On my palette, I've already created the colors that I'm going to need. I have a very intense uh, blue-black. So in this case, I mixed ultramarine and um, burnt sienna together, and I got kind of this gray-blue. This was way too bright a blue for water, but to tone it down just a bit with some burnt sienna, I have this nice gray-blue, which is perfect. Um, so that'll work well. So the first step to create this graded wash um, is I want to wet the paper. And I'm going to start at the bottom of the page, and I want to work my way up toward the shore. And as I get toward the shore, I'm going to turn my brush so that it goes in the skinny direction. 
and I just want to hit some lines of texture along the shore there. So it's not fully wet up there at the top, and that's because I don't want that completely solid. I want it to be kind of broken to get the idea of the light shimmering off that water. So now I'm ready to do the graded wash. And you don't have a lot of time, so you don't want that to dry while you're chatting. So I've got the gray blue on my brush. I loaded it up. So I'm going to go right to the base of the page. Make sure I got more of that. And I'm going to move my brush back and forth. And as I go, I'm diluting the amount of paint that's left in my brush. And again, I'm going to turn my brush in the skinny direction. You can see I kind of got a little bit of broken color up there at the top, which is exactly what I wanted. I don't want to have it solid up here toward the uh, shoreline. I want it to be a little broken. So now I'm ready to do my water reflections. I have to make sure, actually I want to blend that out just a bit. You see I'm getting like a strong stripe there. I don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to try to blend that just a bit. Try to pull that color up a bit. Yeah, that's better. I don't want a strong stripe. I want to make sure that I'm blending that. Okay, that's better. So now I've got my one in, or my half inch flat brush and I'm going to reflect the colors above down here below. My first tree, I'm gonna work from the, well actually I work from, from the left to the right. So my first tree is green. So I'm gonna grab some of that same green off my palette. In this case, it's pretty much the straight hooker screen. I have my one inch flat brush and I'm gonna put the brush right against the shoreline and make a quick strike of the brush downward into, and you can see where I get that little, dry brush texture there and it's soft down here where it's still wet. I'm going to make my reflection as wide as the tree is because I don't want to have it too narrow and it's a little dark on light there so all right so I've got a little bit of sparkle in there actually I think I'm going to go ahead and do this tree over here since I've already got this color on my brush. I'm going to pull straight down make sure that you're it's a quick swipe of the brush and you want to leave a little bit of that dry texture there and you can see how quickly it swipes. Make sure you're starting against the shoreline, not down in the wet area, but against the shoreline. So now I've got a burnt sienna tree in there. I need to get that one. There's a little space in between the trees, so I'm going to get my burnt sienna tree. That looks pretty good. It's about the same amount of reflected light and the width of the tree. And I've got the last one, which is the yellow ochre tree. And again, I want to keep this the same width of the tree. Got a little bit of the broken color in there, but that was a little more solid. Uh, but because I left it lighter there, you can see the difference in the color. All right, so there's my reflections. And I want to look at the paper, and I'm just starting to lose the shine. So it's at the perfect uh, wetness to do this next technique, which is really cool. So I've got a paper towel here. I'm going to squeeze the brush out, make it really nice and razor sharp on that edge. And I'm going to do a little bit of lifting. And I want to create some water ripples and each time I'm going to brush that off onto the paper towel and I want to create water ripples that are a variety of lengths. I don't want to make them all the same length because um, that will just look too prescribed. So I'm going to create longer one there, a little shorter one here. But I would create at least five. Um, not only is that good, good experimenting to try uh, more than once obviously, but also five is a good number um, for compositional reasons. And you can put them wherever you'd like. If you want more than five, you can put more than five. So I might put one right up here through this color. Now one thing to keep in mind, that this one showed up nicely. As you pass through a color, it picks up the color there, but then it deposits it over here, which is kind of fun. Um, it really gives that nice look of the light catching the water. So we're gonna let this one dry, and then my last step for this is to come back in with my liner brush and add little twigs and branches to my trees. All right, so we're ready to finish up uh, our uh, water reflections technique. And we have another technique yet to go, which is working with the liner brush. And that's the brush that's in your set that has the really, really long hair. Um, and we'll be working with that one to create trunks and twigs and branches in these trees. So I've mixed up on my palette a really dark, uh, strong, like a black blue color. And you'll notice that even if your, your liner brush is kind of fuzzy looking, when you put it in the water, it should go to a nice fine point. So I'm gonna start um, with my tree that's on the left here. And I'm going to create the trunk and 
with the liner brush, just know that it's made to create thin lines. So you want to make sure that you're trying to create as thin a line as you can. And think about the structure of the tree and how it might support itself. So you can certainly create you know, twigs. Um, where this has foliage, I might continue that trunk here. Um, and then perhaps there's a branch that comes up from there because we've got to somehow support this top of the tree here. So certainly uh, consider how that might be supported. And this branch may split into two. And then maybe there's some twigs coming up the top here. Um, but I'm sure there's probably some twigs coming out the side. So try to use your liner brush to um, create some good structures. You can do a split trunk. So maybe this tree started off and ended up growing in two directions. And I can split some branches there. And you just want to kind of get an indication of the types of branches and things that are inside the tree. You don't have to put every single branch in, uh, but you want to give some structure to, to the tree. And so then this next one, I kind of made it a little bit wide because I was thinking it could actually be two trees. So I think I'm going to make this one into a thicker trunk here. Now there's a little bit more open over here, so I'm going to create just oh, a little bit there. To create just a little bit of branches over in this end. And then perhaps there's a smaller tree that's just started in here. Last tree. Maybe this one's a bigger tree. Make that trunk a little bit thicker. And that's that.